we're going to show you guys how to successfully apply thermal compound. Now there's going to be a lot of different discussions, a lot of different ways that you can actually go about doing this. And there's even different types of application methods. Um, here in our experience actually at ASUS, application method um, will actually vary depending on the actual type of heat sink that's utilized. Um, take for instance, let's say a heat pipe based uh, heat sink would actually maybe be applied differently than let's say a heat sink that uses a direct plate based technology. Um, ultimately, you're gonna always wanna reference the manual information. The vendors have taken extensive time in terms of doing analysis, set up uh, and, and verification to actually see what works best. Um, going over to the next point, you're going to find that there's a lot of aftermarket thermal compound solutions uh, that can state that they offer better performance. But once again, I generally advocate utilizing whatever comes included with the actual cooling solution. Uh, the performance metrics that are generally advertised with whatever cooling solution you're purchasing, such as these Noctua solutions that we're utilizing, have been validated with the thermal compound that they're actually utilizing. Uh, this helps to ensure consistency not only within the actual metallurgic uh, plating mechanism that they have on their heat sink, um, but also in terms of what the expected dissipation properties is of the compound that is utilized. Now you can always attempt to go ahead and uh, pursue and go ahead and get higher performing thermal compound, but be aware that different compounds have different types of viscosities, different types of densities, different compositions, which may affect how they're actually distributed and other factors. Um, so overall, that's why I generally recommend that. Uh, some solutions may even come pre-applied with the thermal compound. Um, so in those situations, you can feel free to utilize that and feel comfortable that you're going to get a good quality thermal compound material. Um, so with that, here we have our actual uh, syringe, which has the thermal compound inside of it. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, get ready, and we're going to apply some. Now, some people always state how much is that you can apply. Um, some people refer to the size of a coin or like a pea. Um, these are, uh, to a relative degree, okay. And actually, fairly reasonable is if you actually look at the size of the capacitors that are on motherboards, you want to shoot for a little bit larger surface area than about the size of the capacitor. Um, but at the end of the day, this is not something to obsess over. Um, your goal is to just be able to apply, apply sufficient compound to disperse across this IHS and to be able to make contact with the base plate of your cooling solution. You just don't want to have metal on metal contact. Um, to the same degree though, having too much thermal compound can be a very bad thing and create uh, contact issues to where your thermal solution will not work correctly. So in, in most situations, less is more, okay? Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and apply a, a relatively small amount here. And what you can do is if you wanna go on baby steps, uh, you can go ahead and apply a reasonable amount and then actually use your heat sink uh, to depress against the actual thermal compound that you've applied and see how much you have in place. So that's a pretty reasonable amount that we have there, a little bit more than, than the size of the capacitor. But what we could then go ahead and do is we could take our actual heat sink and we could depress it against that. Uh, you want to try to do this approximately with a good amount of downward force. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place this on top of there, press it down, allow it to disperse, and then we can actually check to see how much of the compound has been spread across. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this guy down here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and depress this and we're going to keep it torqued down there just for about uh, 10 seconds or so. Of course, the longer the better and you're going to get more even dispersion, so just kind of keep this in mind. But this is for you guys that if you really want to check, you kind of want to verify, you can kind of get a sense of how much has been applied. Now at this point, uh, it's gone ahead and spread out a bit. So you just want to be careful when you're pulling up that you don't, just don't want to pull away too aggressively. Uh, you don't want to smear the compound out. So we just kind of want to pull a little bit upwards. And you can see right there, we've got a pretty clean contact, good circular, uh, almost in a square base fashion. And if you guys check from the camera angle here, the second one, you can see that we've covered pretty good amount there of the CPU. The upper top portion's not too bad. And what you can actually do is if you notice, you want and you've got the flexibility, you could move um, the actual heat sink or you could spread it out a little bit there. But overall, that's actually pretty solid. Okay guys, that's how you successfully apply thermal compound.